Miracle. So at last, we have finally made it to the last album in the Amorphous series, which is their brand new one, Circle, which has just come out in Finland just today, and will be coming out in America in about a week or so, April 30th, so I will definitely be checking out my copy then, but now, let's get on to the review. So Amorphous have enlisted the help of Peter Taglin, whatever his name is, I... I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry, but um, anyway, they've enlisted the uh, help of him as the new producer for this album. I know him, of course, from um, Bloodbath. He uh, did the vocals on uh, their uh, second album, I believe. I forget the name of it. It slips my tongue, but you'll know what I'm talking about. All you like extreme metal fans out there should definitely know who I'm talking about. And of course, he provides his own trademark sort of heavier, more raw production uh, to the whole thing, um, while Amorphous still get to keep all their uh, amazing trademarks that made the uh, four previous albums really good, uh, beginning of times to a lesser extent, but all good nonetheless. But um, yeah, the thing that makes this album different from the other ones is um, just the sonoscape, the atmosphere of the record. It definitely seems just a lot heavier by comparison, even though the previous albums were heavy too, it's just uh, Peter Toglin definitely um, brought this album to a whole new level in terms of heaviness. And let's see why of the track listing here. I made notes because I'm not going to be able to go back to the album until I um, actually pick it up because um, this was just for reviewing purposes, but I made notes so I'm just going to read off of those. Um, track number one is Shades of Grey, which is the second single of the album and uh, one of the first that they've ever made. Um, I remember seeing the uh, studio reports for it and uh, just going crazy for uh, just how uh, heavy and extreme the riff sounded and indeed this is one of the heavy hitters of the album. Um, it definitely has like that majestic beast, pepper they got a fire, um, greed feel to it. It just feels like it's here to pound you in submission. It's ready to kick your ass. Um, definitely. If you want to hear me go more into detail about this song, I made a track review right here, so if you want to check that out, I'm just going to move on here. Very good song. I really like it. Mission is the next song, and by God, this is a catchy one. Um, it has a beautiful intro with the keyboard leads, and it just goes into a really just catchy a highly spirited, bouncy song. It has a lot of fantastic melodies, and there's this one piano solo in the, uh, like, right in the middle somewhere, and uh, this, I think this is one of Jan Reckberger's, like, I think this is, like, one of his catchiest, like, drum performances. Like, I found myself just drumming away, like, air drumming away to his performance because it's really good. Um, he just has a really nice, like, rolling, steady drumming pattern and it really uh, gives the song a lot of momentum. I like the guitar solo in the middle. Um, uh, this It's just one of my favorites on this album. This is a fantastic song from front to back. This is one that I'm just going to be playing non-stop as soon as I pick up my copy of the album. Fantastic track. Um, next is The Wanderer. It's a great song with a very catchy and solid driving beat. Um, it's not as good as the previous song, but um, it's still really good, solid track. Um, I just, I also love how the uh, band, uh, like, I think they um, changed like a whole step, um, like at the very last chorus. I mean, the chorus is like one of my favorite parts about this song, but I especially love the last chorus of this song. It gives the uh, ending a lot more of a direct emotional effect, and that gives it um, many points in my book. Next song is Narrow Path, another one of my favorites on this album. Very folky, very energetic. It reminds me quite a bit of Leaf Scar from the Eclipse album, only I actually like this way more. Uh, it's a bit longer for one thing, and um, also the melodies here are just very blissful. They're very full of life. Um, just throughout the entire song, like, especially during the chorus, the bridge, the solo section, and, like, the very ending of the song, I think there's just, um, there's a lot of life in it, and 
I can't really describe it much further than that. There's a lot of fantastic riffs here, great drum work. It's just an extremely headbangable song. It's almost impossible to resist. I found myself headbanging throughout the entire thing. But um, that there's really not much else to say about it. But um, yeah, it's a damn awesome song. It's one of the absolute standouts on here for me. I, I love it. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Hopeless Days is the first single of this album, and um, at first I gave it like a solid 8 in my uh, track review, which by the way, I'll uh, put a link to it right here, so if you want to check that out. Um, so there you go, we got Shades of Grey, track review, Hopeless Days, track review, so check those out. Um, so um, I don't really have a lot to say uh, about this that I haven't really already said in my Hopeless Days track review, except um, that um, going back to uh, this song again, I find myself really enjoying the chorus even more than I did before. Um, the chorus I thought was, yeah, okay, but now just uh, going back into it, I think it actually resonates a lot more with me, and I find myself really wanting to sing along with it, and I know I definitely will whenever I pop this baby into my car, so yeah. Great, great song. I think it's getting better and better the more I listen to it. Next song is Nightbird Song. It's a, It has a very soft, uh, gentle introduction, and, uh, and that it turns out to be the biggest cock tease you'll ever find in metal music, because uh, right after that little introduction, boom! Um, there's just like, you just get hit in the face with like a jackhammer of just furious riffs and just aggressive vocals. Um, this is another one of like the heavy hitters on the album, and I think this is the first Amorphous song I've heard which actually takes in a bit of black metal influence because a lot of the riffs in here, they have that dun 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 So um, that's pretty much what the riffs sound like. It's very black metal-esque, and even Tommy Yutzen's vocals sort of go into that uh, black metal area. I mean, not quite, but you can definitely see he's trying to get into that region, and uh, this turns out to be a, another standout, uh, another one of my favorites on this album. I, I definitely love it. This would totally be a great song for these guys to play live. I can imagine a lot of the more extreme metalers just like raising their fists and being, oh, because uh, this is just a really great song for a live environment. And, um, yeah, it should totally be a lot of fun for them. Next song is Into the Abyss, which I have to admit is probably the weakest song on the album. Uh, I'm not saying it's bad or anything, I still think it's a good song, and it beats a lot of the, uh, songs that I've heard off of the beginning of Time's album, which I thought was a little underwhelming, but... Anyway, yeah, uh, Into the Abyss, like, in the context of this album, I think is the weakest song on here, but uh, for what it is, it's still really good. It has a great, like, keyboard intro, it sets a really good tone, um, there's some really good, like, clean vocal passages throughout, and it has a very interesting, like, time signature that these guys play. It's like a dun 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 um, so it sounds very unique for this band. I mean, I could imagine Amorphous playing um, a time signature like that before, but it's not something I heard uh, too often, I don't believe. It sounds very prog-like, but I could totally imagine Amorphous like playing something like that. And I think it works really well for what it is. I really like the uh, middle section of the song where the acoustic guitars come in and there's this really awesome like keyboard solo in there. Of course, it's amorphous. That's like one of their big trademarks, the keyboards. You gotta have those keyboards. They're fucking amazing. But yeah, overall I think this is probably the weakest song in the album, but just not bad. Still really good for what it is. Next song is Enchanted by the Moon. Holy shit, is this one good. Um, it has a very doomy intro, uh, which will then um, get into um, basically the music that makes up like the chorus of the song, and then it goes right into that verse. A very pounding, crushing, doomy verse. Um, Tommy's just growling away. Uh, it has that dun 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 sort of sound to it. And uh, the organ complements it very well. It's a very haunting, like, menacing sound. 
Um, it reminds me a bit of uh, Tales from the Thousand Lakes, how we heard organs off of that. And the organ sounded really haunting on that album too, and they do here especially as well. Um, and I really love the imagery here. It's like the verse is um, basically, um, you're listening and uh, imagine yourself being enchanted by the moon. It's like, this is when you are enchanted by the moon um, to your doom. It's like you're being um, hypnotized to walking off a cliff. And then the chorus comes, the power rushes over me. And um, it's a very soaring course, and you feel like you're soaring over the edge to the clouds up above. Um, yeah, just a lot of great imagery. The music just um, complements that extremely well. This is just a very well put together song. And it's just an awesome, fantastic uh, piece overall. I really love this one. This is another standout. And at last, we make it to A New Day, the epic finale of the album. You can tell they're going for like a more heartfelt vibe on here um, with the uh, church organs and the acoustic guitars and the intro. And the chorus itself is uh, very heartfelt and emotional. It tugs at your heartstrings. Um, the verse is also really cool. It reminds me of Sentenced on a particularly pious day. And um, I think the main part here that stands out for me, well, even though this entire song is a standout, it's a very diverse song. Like, in the middle, it goes into, like, a acoustic-driven section with uh, some choir keyboards in the background. And um, when you listen to it, it reminds you of, or definitely reminds me, of Weeper on the Shore from Elegy. Um, there's definitely a big elegy vibe going on here, um, what with like the sea chanting themes and whatever. And I need to mention the ending, um, to this song. Um, the saxophonist is of course, uh, Sakari Kako, or at least correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure he does contribute here because he's a very distinct style of saxophone playing. Um, because I know he contributed on Tuanella and Om Universum, uh, so I know he played a very big part in like the middle era Amorphous albums, and uh, I'm pretty sure he does contribute to this one, so um, yeah, very nice touch from him, and uh, yeah, just a beautiful ending, of course. Um, fantastic song to a fantastic album, probably the best since Skyforger. Overall, I might as well give this a 9.25 out of 10. This is an excellent release. Um, it's too early to say if this will be um, Skyforger, my current favorite Amorphous album or not, but um, this has a good chance of doing so in time. I think many of these songs will uh, grow on me even more, um, as evidenced by Hopeless Days. So my uh, thoughts on Hopeless Days right now are a little bit different than what you see in the track review up here. So... Yeah, I think this entire album will grow on me even more, and it'll become, I mean, it's already become one of my favorites, but maybe it'll become even more of a favorite, so to speak. But anyway, um, that's all I have to say about this album. Definitely check this album out, guys. If you're in Finland, uh, you must have already bought the album already, but for all of us here in America and abroad... Pick this album up when it comes out on April 30th. I know I will, like the first day it comes out. So, yeah. I know this review has been really long and all that, but I just want to say thank you very much, everybody who's been following my Amorphous discography series. If you haven't uh, checked out all the other Amorphous reviews, you most certainly can. They all vary in range to some extent. But anyway, I'm done rambling. Thank you very much for um, sticking around. And I'll see you next time.